are you doing welcome to live stream number 75 today is october it is the 12th it's 2 p.m eastern and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream either if you are entering right in right now to say hi or if you are watching the recording both of them really uh, appreciate it today we are going to talk about stl files we are going to talk about how you can change and how you can modify them uh, right inside of Fusion 360. I can see we already got people coming in. This is absolutely awesome. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, join the live stream. And of course, like I said, if you're watching the recording, thank you. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you would hit that uh, subscribe button. That would mean the world to me. So, talk about STL files. Um, Let's just start out by let's just start out by talking a little bit about this type of file, STLs. It normally comes from two places. It either comes from a scanning device, um, or we are talking 3D printing. Now, um, I have talked about STLs before on the live stream, and until recently, I have never been a big fan of STL files. The reason for that is that STL files is really just made up of triangular shapes um, versus like solid modeling where there's actually data in there, right? It, it knows, the computer knows there's something there. Uh, it's, it's a solid, you can, you can do different things with it. STL files is literally just made up of triangles. It's the outer shell, nothing fancy about it now in the past whenever you worked with uh, CAD software you couldn't really do anything with STL files um, again just you couldn't go in and manipulate these triangular points you could literally just open up and look at it until fusion um, started to mess around with the with um, the mess settings that we're going to explore today so you can actually now modify them inside uh, of Fusion and work with them. But like I said, scanning, 3D scanning or printing. So um, for 3D scanning, it kind of makes sense. You you are scanning something um, and normally it's just by sh you know shining a light or a laser or something on something. And the STL makes sense because it's kind of like just building the shell around it out of these triangles. 3D printing, because it is uh, just a shell again, and uh, not really a high resource. The problem with STL files that many people run into is then when you're scanning, for example, um, how big are you gonna make these triangles? The smaller you make them, uh, the finer detail do you get on your model. You're gonna see that just in two seconds inside of Fusion. Um, the, the smaller you make the triangle, the, the more accurate they're gonna be but you're going to end up with a lot of triangles and that's where CAD software in the past have really somewhat choked because it can't handle uh, you know a, a huge amount of triangles because CAD software is actually trying to um, you know you want to create into a solid and you're getting all this data and the more triangles you have the bigger data that, that gets so CAD companies normally put a limit on it just to make sure that your computer don't kind of like just box down because there is so much data. We're gonna talk a lot more about that. So that's the problem with STLs, but let's dive into uh, to, uh, to Fusion. Well, before we do that, I just gotta bring up this website here. Uh, this is uh, Thingiverse, I think is how you pronounce it. This is from Makerbot who makes 3D printers. And a lot of people, a lot of you guys have uh, pinged me with models that you have found out here. This is all STL files. So this is really 3D printing people who uh, share their models as STL. So you can go out here and you can find your model and uh, you can find a model and then you can just send it right to your 3D printer and print it. The problem is, uh, or the challenge, whatever you wanna call it, that um, then people look at these files and now they want to manipulate them, right? They want to make a couple of changes and that's where uh, they look uh, to Fusion. So I did this before uh, we started, I did this yesterday, but uh, I uploaded uh, Mount Rushmore uh, with Ben Franklin um, in it. 
Um, I'm a big Ben Franklin fan. Uh, so uh, so I uploaded that. And the way you upload STL files into Fusion, you can just go up here. If you want to get them in here, you can go up and hit Upload and hit Select Files. And then it will take you out to wherever I just cleaned out my downloads folder. But that was where I had that one after I downloaded from Thing Thingiverse. Whatever you want to call it. All right, let's open up uh, Ben Franklin on Rushmore. Uh, and open up and look at this uh, STL file. So it opens up fine inside of Fusion 360. Um, now, first thing you want to do is you want to get the mess workspace running um, on your computer. Um, and that is in preview mode. So you have to turn it on. So if you've never played with a mess, just follow me along here. Move up and uh, click on your name. Uh, up here and go into preferences um, and this dialog window is going to open up um, and go over to the tree over here where it says preview and make sure that well I check all of these but at least for today check on you get the mess workspace in here so make sure you go in and do that and when you've done that hit apply and hit okay so let me just repeat that if you haven't already go up to your name preferences Preview and check mess workspace and then hit apply and hit OK. OK, if you didn't get that, uh, watch the recording and go back. Now, one thing that happens with this model when I brought it in and a little disappointment is, well, it looks like a pretty dang good model of Mount Rushmore, but this is not Ben Franklin. I don't know what what happened there, uh, but that had nothing to do with the file. That is just uh, that was just to, to share my uh, disappointment with you. Um, so this is a triangular shape. Uh, um, and you can see that if we kind of like zooming in here a little bit, uh, you will see that everything is made up of these uh, triangles. It's just an, an open shape. Um, and well, what we here's the thing we, we got to determine right off the bat here. And that is um, if we just want to print this thing, um, just go and print it. You don't have to, to change it over to, to anything. Now, if we want to modify it, um, we could try to turn, turn this into a solid. Uh, so we could actually start using some of these commands that we have used before, like, you know, cut, extrude, sweep, loft, and all that stuff. But like I said, the problem that we kind of run into is that the CAD software has to convert uh, all this, all these point, all these triangle shapes into a uh, into a solid shape. Now, if you want to test it out, let's just window this whole mess thing. And I'm in the model space, by the way. Um, and right click, and if you do that, there is an option here called mesh to be wrapped that would really mean turn the mess into um, something that we can turn into a solid so if i click on that uh, you will see that our mesh body is selected because we highlighted it and we can turn it into a new body so i'm going to hit ok but when i do that i get a warning this mess contains a large number of facets that's the triangles uh, mesh surface count sixty six thousand three hundred and eighty six facets <laughs> Give me a dollar for every facet. 66,386. Conversion has been aborted. There you go. Uh, forget about it. Fusion is not going to uh, convert this into a solid. And I hope that this kind of like makes sense. Uh, because if it did this, um, the, the data in there, because every single face, every 66,386 or whatever it was surface, it literally has to calculate every intersection point um, because that's what solid modeling does, right? That it, it keeps everything on check. Um, and your computer would literally just, it will sit there forever. Now we are gonna convert this one a little bit later. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. So don't, um, you know, don't abandon ship yet. We have things to, we can do here. But right out of the gate, this is a problem. And this is a good way for you to test how big uh, these is. So if we want to modify it, we have two options. We can either turn it into a solid, um, then we're going to have to make smaller right uh, uh, rectangles, uh, triangles, sorry, 
not rectangles, triangles. Um, or we could possibly modify this model a little bit. Now for that, we're gonna to go to the mess workspace. Now, when I hit the drop down, you will see that I have a mesh um, tool of workspace uh, over here now. Now, um, even, so we checked that box in the preferences, but this, will, this mesh option will not appear unless you do have a mesh thing on your screen. So if you went over and you hit it in the preferences, checked on the preview, but you try to look for it now and you don't have a mesh on your screen, you're not gonna see it because you know, Fusion is like, well, if you don't have a mesh, you don't really have anything to do in here. So I'm gonna switch over to, to uh, this mesh space in here. Um, and I wanna show you some of the different tools where we can modify this and how we can turn it into a solid. Now, if you literally, I, let me just show you how to make the triangles less so it will convert into a solid because if that's all you're looking for you're not don't really watching this live stream to uh, learn about the other tools though that you probably should uh, but if you're just looking for the quick and dirty uh, within 12 minutes let me show you there is an option in here that is called reduce so if I click on that um, it asks me to select my body now you will see if you look at my mouse you see how my my cursor looks a little weird that's because in default in the mask, we actually have something called paint for selection. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, that's really cool. But I'm not gonna switch it over to our good old standard window selection. And I'm just gonna highlight the entire thing again. So now we got the whole thing selected. Now over here in the menu under the reduce, that was found under the modify tab, uh, you have a couple of different options. You can either reduce it by adaptive or by uniform. That means that now all the triangles gonna be uniform throughout the model. I would think adaptive is what you normally want, you know, just because there's big areas here versus where the eyes is or more details on the faces. Um, you have a couple of different options over here in the reduced target. I normally just bring it down to face counts because that was what we saw before um, when we did the 66,000 face counts. And I always click preserve boundaries and then you have this slider where you can control how many face counts you want. So if I run it all the way up, uh, you will see that it ends up about 60, it was 66 thousands. By the way, this number is not 100% uh, accurate down to uh, the one decimal, but it's pretty damn close. Um, let me roll it down to like something very small, like 5,000. So we're going from 66 thousand down to 5,000. And let me just hit okay here. And it's gonna think for uh, about a second. Literally, well, it's not gonna think because it actually failed it in here. Okay, that's interesting. Um, this is when I. This is what I love. We we'll do these live streams. Let me just try that again. Maybe I make it. Maybe I made it too. We have an adaptive. Let's go to face count. Um, let's just bring it maybe ten thousands. Except if I turn the preview on, it should. Tell me that it's failing in here. Okay, I'm gonna go to 40 thousands. Okay. I don't think it's gonna do this. All right, uh, that is interesting. It should be able to do this. I'm not a quitter. Um, it could be because face count, let's try. Yeah, I want to try one more time here. No. Um, let's try. Let's try to switch it over to density instead, and let's make it really small. Yeah, there's something it doesn't like about about this. It probably doesn't like Benjamin Franklin. It's not the real Benjamin Franklin. All right. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna come back to this. Well, so you should try it on your model. Make that smaller. But of course, the smaller you make it, um, the, the, the less detail you, you're gonna get, right? So if you're looking at, at George Washington here, um, you know, look at how detailed the eyes is, and you know, we have like the, the lips, so you go and look at, at my good 
hero here, Abraham Lincoln, right? There's a lot of detail. The smaller you're making these triangles, um, the or the bigger you're making these triangles, the less you're setting the, the count to, the, the less they're gonna less accurate they're gonna be. And you literally can end up with where you know the faces becomes like blocks. Okay. Uh, let's try to modify this mesh first and see if we can get this uh, face count down. Maybe we, we can figure it out. So um, I want to show you a couple of these tools. First of all, um, this is definitely not Benjamin Franklin. This is a little disappointing, uh, whoever whoever this is. Now I'm going to show you this selection tool over here, this paint tool I showed, I talked about before. There's a cool other tool in here called a mesh palette. I got to show you that. I checked, I checked that on and I get this little... Uh, thing over here where I can actually control kind of like that brush size I'm picking with. So instead of making windows, I can paint. It's almost like a paint brush. Um, and I can change the size here. I can kind of paint areas uh, that I kind of like want to highlight. So this is super nice working inside of, uh, uh, of the mess environment. Also be aware of down here over to the right over here, you have, you can make the selection bigger just by clicking here, you can make it a little bit smaller. That's kind of a nice way too when you're trying to select something. So it's kind of like expanding, expanding out. All right, with all these uh, faces selected, um, let's go up and hit the Modify tab and let's try something crazy like Erase and Fill. Um, like I said, this is definitely up in Franklin's face. So I'm gonna click on that and uh, I get a menu up here. And when I do that, you will see that it changed this the the face profile to the same uniform triangular shape now there is actually something called minimal what is really great where the software actually makes the smallest amount of triangles uh it can use and that makes me look here and i can see i kind of like have some peaks and valleys because i didn't change uh did a very good job selecting let me just go back and maybe select this a little bit better let me make a smaller brush size and just go in and reselect around the edges here so we get as close to the base as possible. Go in here, go in there, okay, and let's try that. So let's go back into modify and let's go into erase and fill. And uh, now, when I switch it over to minimal, it almost became completely flat, like the face was never there. So let's hit OK to that, and we at least got rid of, uh, of that uh, attempt on Ben, ben Franklin uh, over there. So that's a good way to kind of like uh, clean that up, and you see we got a lot less triangles. What actually makes me you know, think, now when we're talking about bringing the face count down, uh, you could use the eraser fill other places, right? Like if I went over an area where it was really, really bumpy. So like if we're looking at uh, Washington's kind of uh, coat area here, if I went over here and I kind of like maybe made the brush size a little bit bigger and I took all these things in here and I now go up and I say erase and fill, um, and I have the minimal checked, I really just eliminated a lot of triangles on an area that may or may not uh, be uh, so important to you, right? So you can actually go in here and kind of like clean this up uh, a little bit with this uh, erase and fill. Another tool you should know about that is in here is the one that is called plain cuts. Uh, you can actually cut through uh, parts of this. So if I hit plain cut, and uh, let's select the mesh body, um, and I can flip it so we get the other end. I can actually uh, kind of like cut with almost like a plane through here, and I can actually get rid of, I don't want to cut Lincoln. Um, I can actually get rid of all that mountain there that was kind of like a little screwed up. Um, and I get an option over here to either no fill or fill. Uh, if I just say no fill and hit okay, it's actually now you can see the shell, you can see the inside uh, of, of the model here. Um, now, of course, we'll do a control Z 
So undo. Um, if I go in and I do uh, that same uh, cut again, I would probably select minimal uh, in here as a as a change to to this. Uh, so now we get the least amount of triangles uh, to kind of uh, close close that up. Uh, so we can we can do that. Now you could also have chosen to uh, instead of cut with a plane, you could also have used like separate. So uh, you know some people have asked me a few times about how do you know what if my what if we wanted to uh, preserve these the the precedents here. Um, Still convert them maybe into solids, um, but we want to to keep a high detail. But it could be by separating uh, through here. So we could go in and uh, you know do a plane cut and decide uh, to you know minimize our our cut distance down to you know one or two. Um, one or two precedents, right? And then save that um, that out, right? And then we could end up with with a higher detail uh, of just of just that that precedent that is now, of course, a lot um, a lot smaller quantity. We could do this in separate files, right? So that was one way we could do it. You could you could do that with a cut. You could also do that uh, with the separate. So if I go in here and click separate. And I select uh, my my mesh here. Let's pre-select it. Oh, I got it on paint window. Click on that, and we can go in and hit separate. And then you can uh, you can separate. Well, I should probably have cut them cut them first, and then uh, then we could we could separate them out like that. Let me just go back to uh, to. Um, the plane cut here for a second. Select my plane. Oh, I think I just made two of them because I separated them. Okay. Um, gonna slow down a little bit on me. It looks like maybe. There we go. And I want minimal. Get a little bit closer to Mr. Lincoln. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, get rid of any of the presidents: Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln over here. Okay, so so one of the ways I guess I'm getting to is that the way we can minimize this is by uh, cutting away portions that that we don't want, right? Um, another tool you need to know about in here, I think, is the smooth tool can also be uh, pretty cool. So let's go back into our paint selection in here and, uh, you know, find an area that maybe uh, you want to smooth out. So if we go in, it looks like there might be some bumps here. I'm going to brush a little smaller. Uh, you can select certain areas. And then if you go in and use the smooth tool, I don't know if you saw it, it actually will uh, change um, how smooth uh, that um, that area gets. Let me hit it again. Three, two, one. See how it kind of like smooths out the area. So it takes those triangles and kind of like uh, shift them out. So that's another tool that you that you definitely should should know about. All right, let's see if we can't turn this one into. Uh, I'm gonna save it for a second and see if that maybe helped my whole select dilemma before. So let's select the whole thing here and let's go in and do a reduce. And I'm gonna leave it on adaptive. I'm gonna change this to face count. And uh, I know that it was 66, but it's probably a lot smaller now where we now where we cut it. Well, actually, you know what? Before we do this, let's find out how small it is. So let's go back into the model environment Let's select the whole thing, right click, say mess to B wrap. Hang on. 
right click the whole thing modify mesh mesh to feed wrap here we go so you will see that we now we went with 66,000 now we exit down to 57,000 but it still don't want to convert it okay so let's see if we can convert this now back to the mesh space reduce and I'm gonna select the whole thing it's probably just user error right Something is happening between the desk chair and the, the keyboard here. Uh, face count. Now, I'm going to try to go up to about, I know that around 40,000s, it actually might do it. So it was at 57. I'm going to do it at 40, and we're going to try to see what it's going to do here. And it still fails. Okay. That is interesting. Um, I am not sure why it would fail in here. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try density and let's just bring it down a little bit. And yeah, maybe there's something with this model, maybe because I have been playing around with with this model, maybe I have done something wrong. Try to repair it. See, I just did a repair on it, but does change the shape a little bit. But now I'm in troubleshooting mode here. Select it. I'm gonna go to face count. Thirty thousand. Maybe I shouldn't have tried that preserve areas. Just thinking about it. All right, hang on. This is not okay with me. What am I doing wrong? Let me just promote up the one original one version free here. Maybe if I don't mess with it. <laughs> Maybe if I stop messing with it. All right, let's try and go into the mess space here. I'm going to try first highlight the thing, reduce, leave it at face count. I'm going to leave this preserved boundaries on. I'll try to go to about 40 thousands and hit OK. Yeah, I don't want to do that. What if we do it without preserve boundaries? No. Okay. What if we do without face count uniform small? Ha! Ah, okay. Uh, you know what we're going to do instead? We're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do this live so how about we do i'm hitting up on the half now there's two more things i wanted to show you so it looks like that this was maybe where where i got this or maybe not i'm not sure let's see here oh yeah yeah this was where i got the ben franklin uh let's try einstein he was a pretty oh that's a so there i downloaded einstein um and let's try to go back in here, hit upload, and let's at least see if we can earn a B plus in trying. While that is loading, I want to take a sip of water. This is why I like live streams. Um, just because, ooh, somebody's saying select from top left to bottom right. Yeah, that actually, you know what? That could actually also be it, couldn't it? It could be because I am selecting the wrong triangle. That's actually maybe not a uh, a bad uh, bad idea. That's just so when I go in here and select, what do I have for? I have select through. So this way versus this. You know what? I don't think that it makes a difference in um in the mess workspace i don't know if it does the same thing as 
as it does in CAD, where it picks different depending on where you are. No, it still gives us a warning. All right, let's try to bring in Einstein here. Maybe, maybe I just need to, uh, maybe I just need to restart Fusion. That could also be. Um, let's see. I haven't seen the Einstein model. All right, Einstein looks a little better, I guess. Um, so again, if we right click here, select this thing, right click and say uh, mess to be rep. Let's see how many. 97,000, 97, so that is definitely a lot more with Einstein in there. Let's go to the mesh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't, shouldn't really matter what we select in here, I would think. Uh, oh yeah, you know what, look at this. It doesn't select the whole thing. Oh, maybe that is actually my issue. Huh. I would be. All right, let's try this. So now everything is selected. I just held down control while I made sure that I think I literally windowed every possible thing in here. Uh, let's try it now. Reduce. I'm going to do the face count. And I, like I said, 40,000 for me have, have worked in the past. Hit OK. And now I actually think we might get in somewhere. Now, you need to be aware of that when you do this, no, we're not getting anywhere. When you do this uh, normally, that um, if you could get it to work, is that I probably just have to uh, restart. It could also be because this live stream software sometimes do interfere. Remember when we did the rendering? That screwed everything up. So it could be that that I, I guess I'm I could be finding finding in here. Let's try five thousands. Um, now what you will see though, if it converts it down, is that it's gonna it's not gonna work. That it is gonna. Uh, you've seen it many times that you can try on your own on your own stuff. Um, is that it's gonna work a lot slower in here uh, after you convert it into a solid. And honestly. If you just got a 3D printed, I don't know if I wouldn't even, even convert it into a solid. The only one reason I want to bring it into a solid is maybe into the model environment is if I have to uh, to uh, do something spe specific with it. Now, one other thing I want to show you, though, before I'm, I'm, I'm quitting on today's live stream. Hopefully you got something out of it. Besides that, I'm struggling sometimes, too, when I do these and I don't prepare enough. Um, another tool you need to know about if you are doing a lot of printing is the align tool uh, in here uh, that will actually let you select. Uh, now I don't have uh, a body, but it. All right. Now you gotta. Now you gotta pretend with me here. Remember this simulation thing. Just play. Just play along here. So this part here, we um, we we converted this from an STL file into a solid. We didn't, but. Uh, I want to show you the align tool. So if we click the, the origin here, you will see that in this case here, Z is is up. Uh, so this would be would be up. Well, the align tool is great if you're doing 3D printing and if we knew that Brushmore is not going to fit on our bed this way, it needs to be kind of like uh, flipped upside on one side. Like I need to kind of like have it you know, standing like this for it to be able to fit inside of my printer. Um, so if you go into the align tool, it's under modify, align tool in here, you select your body that you, uh, you select the body that you, you want to, 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 to have here. And you can select a face, for example, this, and then you can just hit the plane and it flips it um, to that face. So this is an easy way. The align tool, tool is in a super easy way to take a model that don't want to fit and bring it and, and lay it over. The other thing, of course, that I should also say when it comes to, especially if you've got a 3D print this, uh, go into uh, the make, go to print, 
And in here, you get some other options on how you can refine the triangular shape of your, your, your part. Um, I use Mess Mixer for uh, my print utility. There's a couple of under, other ones in here. You pick whatever one you want. Uh, but a lot of the things that I just showed you, you, you can do inside of a Fusion, like cutting things away, healing things. You can actually also do that inside of something like Mess Mixer. Same thing like flipping it. Uh, upside down okay well I'm terribly sorry that I couldn't show you the big finale uh, of, uh, of exit turning into to a solid but you know what honestly if you wanted to 3d print it um, it wasn't really uh, you know no reason to do it anyways unless you wanted to use sweeps or cuts and things like that um, I guess that is what I gotta pay when I do these live streams that not always things works but I hope you got something out of it. At least you got to see the mess environment. Um, and I bet you that as soon as we're done here, I go in and try it. And then it's, gonna, of course, going to work. That's that's how it is. Hope that was useful. Um, you know what? We're going to end the, today's live stream. Tomorrow's live stream is one hour later. It's at 3 o'clock. And we're going to talk about CAM. We're going to talk about how do you machine the second side of your part. So a lot of people have asked me that question. You machine the top side. You want to flip it over. How do you do that? It's going to be... Fairly basic. We're not going to get into too much of advance tomorrow. But if you were wondering about that, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Again, sorry that I didn't ever got it converted over to a solid. But hey, you saw some cool mess tools, I think. I want to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. Um, so if you're watching the recording, really appreciate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like these videos. Um, and I'm going to jump in the live stream and say hi to everybody. Take care.